Thanks, Amy, and I'm Randy Hansen. In today's world news headlines, European stock plummets as Greek Prime Minister announces popular referendum on bailout. And brokerage giant MF Global Holdings files bankruptcy following risky bets. And police raid occupied encampments in California and Virginia. And Tennessee federal judge orders state to stop enforcing new rules against occupied demonstrators. Wounded Occupy Oakland protester Scott Olson gives thumbs up to news of widespread support. And UNESCO votes overwhelmingly to accept Palestinian Authority as member. An attorney of U.S. soldiers says my client severed fingers of Afghan civilians as war trophies. And Kenya accused of killing five wounding dozens of children in Somalia camp bombing. And Rick Perry's flat tax plan would lead to major cut for millionaires, hike for poor. And Perry followers express shock at video of strange speech. And NATO ends Libya bombing campaign after striking nearly 6,000 targets. And California firm acknowledges Syrian government using its technology to suppress dissent. And Committee to Protect Journalists Alarmed Over Ongoing Disappearance of Syrian Reporters and Bloggers. And out of Egypt, thousands protest military detention of prominent blogger. And another report says increased frequency of weather disasters results of global warming. And prominent climate change skeptic admits global warming is real. But before these stories, GVTV News, I'd like to thank one of our underwriters who supports your only visual video news media in Nevada County. That's right, it's us, GVTV News. Today's first world news story in financial news stock in Europe are plummeting after Greek Prime Minister George Pampandro announced that he would put Greece's 179 billion bailout to a popular referendum. Most opinion polls suggest Greek voters will not accept further austerity measures and will reject the bailout package. Analysts predict a no vote on the referendum would force Greece to declare bankruptcy and default on its debt. A no vote would also likely force Greece to abandon the euro. And John Corzine's brokerage firm, MF Global Holdings, filed for bankruptcy protection Monday following risky bets on debt issued by Italy, Portugal, and Spain. MF Global becomes the largest U.S. casualty of Europe, Europe's debt crisis and the seventh largest bankruptcy by assets in U.S. history. On Monday, federal investigators discovered as much as $700 million in customer funds missing from the firm. Corzine is the former U.S. senator and New Jersey governor who once ran Goldman Sachs. MF Global employed 2,870 employees worldwide. Police in Richmond, Virginia and Palm Desert, California have raided encampments, raided encampments of Occupy Wall Street protesters in Richmond. Police arrested nine demonstrators and demolished their camp with bulldozers, scooping tents and other items into dump trucks. In Palm Desert, at least seven Occupy protesters were arrested in an early morning crackdown. In Tennessee, a federal judge has ordered the state to stop enforcing new rules that restrict demonstrators' ability to protest. 
Demonstrators began occupying Legislative Plaza in Nashville on October 9th. Just three weeks later, the state enacted new rules without any public review, eliminating their right to gather after 4 p.m. and implementing a 10 p.m. curfew. In Occupy News, wounded Iraq War veteran Scott Olson reportedly gave a thumbs up to his roommate after being told of the support he has received from Occupy demonstrators around the world. 24-year-old suffered a cracked skull and brain swelling after Oakland police fired tear gas into a crowd of protesters last Tuesday. His injury led to the anti-police brutality marches and vigils around the country. Olson is still unable to speak and has been communicating to family and friends with a notepad he keeps next to his hospital bed. Members of the United Nations Cultural Agency, UNESCO, voted overwhelmingly Monday to accept the Palestinian Authority as a member in defiance of the United States and Israel, well, in defiance to them. In the vote, 107 nations backed the Palestinian bid, not 14 nations voted against it, 52 nations abstained. Following the vote, the United States announced it is withdrawing its financial support for UNESCO. The United States provides about 20% of UNESCO's $70 million budget. Nimrod Barkins, Israel ambassador to UNESCO, criticized the vote, and he said, we regret that the organization of state has opted to adopt a resolution which is a resolution of science fiction. Unfortunately, there is no Palestinian state, therefore one should not have been admitted today. We would like to thank the many countries that voted against it or abstained, realizing that this is the wrong thing for UNESCO to do at this stage because it may hurt the peace process in the future. Palestinian Authority has expressed hope that their success in achieving membership in UNESCO will help it be recognized by other international bodies, including the International Atomic Energy Agency and the World Health Organization. Kulad Duyibiz, the Palestinian Minister of Tourism and Antiques, said the full membership will open doors for us, especially to the face of the deliberate destruction of cultural heritage by the occupation, start to preserve the Palestinian site which is eligible to be in UNESCO World Heritage List. The attorney for the U.S. Army soldiers, soldier accused of leading the so-called kill team in Afghanistan has admitted his client cut off fingers of dead Afghan civilians as war trophies. The lawyer claims Staff Sergeant Calvin Gibbs was not involved in actual killing of Afghans. However, Gibbs is one of the five soldiers charged with killing three Afghan civilians for sport and has pleaded not guilty to 16 criminal charges. Three men within the platoon have pleaded guilty. They have agreed to testify that it was Gibbs' idea to kill civilians and stage the deaths to make them appear to have been combatants. The men claim that Gibbs harbored a deep hatred for Afghans and would refer to them as savages. In March 2011, photos surfaced of soldiers posing with the corpses of Afghan civilians they had allegedly just killed. The Kenyan military is being accused of bombing a camp in Somalia that provides shelter to 1,500 internally displaced households. According to the group's Doctors Without Borders, the air raid killed at least five people and wounded 45 others, including 31 children. Kenya confirmed it bombed the camp, but claimed the only casualties were members of the militant group Al-Shabaab. Kenyan troops invaded Somalia two weeks ago to hunt down Al-Shabaab fighters. And longtime followers of Republican presidential candidate, Texas Governor Rick Perry, have expressed shock over how Perry handled himself on stage this weekend in New Hampshire, joking with the audience, amusing himself at times, and repeatedly using strange mannerisms. Video clips of the speech have been viewed over 150,000 times on YouTube. Governor Rick Perry's Republican presidential candidate said, this is such a cool state. I mean, come on, live free or die. I mean, you know, you got to love that, right? I come from a state, you know, where they had a little place called the Alamo and they declared victory or death. You know, we're kind of into those slogans. It's like live free or die, victory or death. Bring it up, bring it. In news from Libya, NATO ended its bombing campaign on Monday. Over the past seven months, NATO aircraft conducted more than 26,500 sorties, including 9,700 strike missions. NATO said it bombed 5,900 military targets inside Libya. Meanwhile, the National Transitional Council has elected Abdul Rahim al kib to be the Libya's interim prime minister. He spent years in exile outside of Libya and helped with the financing of the revolt against 
Colonel Muammar Gaddafi. He received a doctorate in electoral engineering from North Carolina State University. A California firm that makes internet blocking equipment has acknowledged that the Syrian government has been using at least 13 of its devices to suppress dissent and block access to the internet despite its U.S. trade embargo. The company Blue Coat Systems claims it does not know how its devices got to Syria. Since 2004, the United States has prohibited the export without a special license of most U.S. goods and services to Syria. Blue Coat Systems technology has also been used by several U.S. allies for censorship and surveillance, including Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, in Qatar. The Committee to Protect Journalists has expressed alarm over the continued disappearance of Syrian journalists and bloggers. At least three journalists and bloggers have disappeared since October 24th. Three of the journalists were detained on August 4th and have not been heard from since. The blogger Hussein Greer disappeared on October 24th. Days before his disappearance, he wrote in his blog, Silence doesn't serve us after today. We don't want a country where we get imprisoned for uttering a word. We want a country that embraces and welcomes words. Thousands of Egyptians protested on Monday in Cairo's Tahrir Square in the protest of the military's re recent detention of prominent blogger Allah Abd El Fattah. On charges of inciting violence and sabotage, El Fattah has said the army had no legitimacy to even interrogate him and said he would only speak to a civilian official. Egyptian activist Yahiwa Wahid took part in Monday's protest and said, This case shows how unfair the military council is towards the revolutionaries. The council that originally said we are protecting the revolution is now throwing them in military jails and trying them in military courts. And others who have robbed the people and killed them for being, are being tried in front of regular courts and are living in five-star prisons. A soon-to-be-released report by the UN Intergovernmental Panel of Climate Change has found that the freakish weather disasters are striking more often as a result of global warming. According to the Associated Press, the new IPCC report says scientists are virtually certain that the world will have more extreme spells of heat and fewer of cold. Heat waves could peak as much as 5 degrees hotter by mid-century and even 9 degrees hotter by the end of the century. In other climate news, a prominent skeptic of global warming has admitted that climate change is real and now says that the rising level of greenhouse gases could have a disastrous impact on the world. Richard Mueller, who works at the University of California, Berkeley and Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, said he spent the last two years studying the climate data. He found that the land is 1.6 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than in the 50s. Mueller's change of heart has made headlines in part because of two Funds he is, who funds his research? One quarter of the 600,000 of his research funding comes from the right-wing Charles Koch Foundation. And that's it for the World News Today. Now another thanks to one of our underwriters who supports your only visual video news media in Nevada County. You guessed it, it's us. GV TV News. Soundcheck Music Center, the rock and roll connection. We have guitars, amps, drum equipment, sound accessories, lessons, and repairs. We are located at 671 Maltman Drive, Grass Valley. 530-272-7236, open seven days a week. Something happening here But what it is ain't exactly clear There's a man with a gun over there Telling me I got to beware That's right, it's time for the police blotter and pictures in the blotter, not from these actual events, but used for visual aid only. Grass Valley Police Department on Tuesday at 10.54 a.m., Caller from 100 block of West Main Street reported a man camping out and going through dumpsters. In 2.16 p.m., caller from 100 block of South Auburn Street reported a woman trying to buy cigarettes without ID, causing a disturbance and refusing to leave. 
And 3.37 p.m., a caller from 600 block of Whiting Street reported hearing six shots, then another six shots. No one was located. 10.39 p.m., a caller from 100 block of King Court reported a man causing a disturbance and screaming. And Monday, 5.55 a.m., a caller from 200 block of Cornwall Avenue reported hearing four gunshots. Nevada County Sheriff's Office on Sunday, 12.44 p.m., a caller from 11,000 block of Buckeye Court reported vandalism two lights. 12.58 p.m., a man from 12,000 block of Mooney Flat Road reported a person trespassing. And 2.39 p.m., a woman from 10,000 block of Cedar Avenue reported a person threatened to hit her if she didn't shut up. And 2.41 p.m., a caller from Sleep Hollow and Bird's Eye Canyon reported shooting. 3.53 p.m., a woman from Scott's Flat reported a man arrested recently for impersonating an officer had been at her camp five years ago. At 6.42 p.m., a woman from 13,000 block of Forest Park Lane reported drug items at a residence. 8.52 p.m., a woman from 13,000 block of Paradale Road reported a neighbor had music on too loud, cut tree limbs on her property, and turned off the Christmas lights. Monday, 12.41 a.m., a woman from 29,000 block of Highway 49 reported a possible assault. And Nevada City Police Department on Sunday. At 10.55 a.m., a woman from 400 block of Sacramento Street reported a person on her property without permission. At 11.39 p.m., a man was arrested on suspicion of being drunk in public, vandalism, and forced entry in 300 block of Broad Street. And that's it for the police blotter today. Now another thanks to one of our underwriters who supports your only visual video news media in Nevada County. That's right, it's us, GV TV News. In today's local news headlines, motorcycle rider in critical condition after collision. The community mourns loss of longtime Nevada County educator Kenneth Gamelgard, killed abroad in an auto accident. In our first local story, written by Christopher Rosacker of the Union, motorcyclist who slammed head on into a minivan Monday night in Nevada City was airlifted to Sutter Roseville Trauma Center with life threatening injuries, according to the Nevada County Consolidated fire district. The rider, a 41-year-old Nevada City man, was reportedly traveling east on Grove Street shortly before 7 p.m. when he collided with a minivan carrying two females and a young child, according to reports from Consolidated Fire in Nevada City Police Department. He was reportedly driving an Enduro motorcycle, a large dirt bike designed for extended street use. After crashing into the van's windshield, the driver was ejected driver rider was ejected and landed 30 to 40 feet away, said Captain Jim Turner, Nevada County's consolidated fire. The van's front end was completely collapsed from the motorcycle's impact and both airbags were deployed. I've been in this business for 25 years and that was one of the worst motorcycle accidents I've ever seen, Turner added. The amount of damage was mind-boggling. Although his exact speed has not yet been determined, the motorcyclist was reportedly driving in excess of the speed limit and traveling in the oncoming lane, according to Nevada City Police Lieutenant Lauren Gage. Alcohol use may have been a factor, but a toxicology report has not yet been completed. Grove Street, an already narrow road, 
was packed with parked cars of Halloween trick-or-treaters at the time of the collision, Turner said. The collision reportedly occurred at the peak of a hill on the 160 block. The occupants of the minivan were transported by ambulance to Sierra Nevada Memorial Hospital and were released after being treated for minor injuries. Nevada City Police would not release the names of name of the motorcyclist as his next of kin has reportedly not yet been notified. Another sad story written by Liz Keller of the Union. Longtime local educator Kenneth Gamelgard was killed in an automobile accident Saturday morning while returning home from an overseas visit to see his son Peter and daughter-in-law Katie. Kenneth and his wife Ellen had been in Kyrgyzstan for 11 days and were on their way to the airport to return to Nevada County when their taxi was struck by a drunk driver killing Kenneth at the age of 61. Ellen, Peter and Katie were taken for to a local hospital for approximately 30 hours of limited medical care and were then flown to medevac flight to Dubai, United Arab Emirates. Ellen is recovering from minor head and neck injuries. Peter is also in fair condition with an injured foot, ribs, and face. Kitty has been diagnosed with a significant fracture to a vertebrae as well as severe concussion and has been admitted to the ICU. All three family members are expected to make full recovery, said Kenneth's youngest, youngest son, Alex Gamelgard, a Grass Valley police officer. Kenneth Gamelgard began his career in ed educational administration in Meadow Vista before spending many years as superintendent and principal at Clear Creek Elementary School District. Gamelgard loved education, loved kids, said Clear Creek School District Superintendent Scott Lay, who worked with him for a number of years. He hired me, Lay said. He gave me my first opportunity to be a teacher. He always was smiling, always upbeat, Lay continued. He enjoyed life. When I heard the news, it made me numb. Gamagard was a family guy, Lay said. He loved his boys. They meant the world to him. He also had served as an assistant principal at Nevada Union High School, as superintendent and principal of Penryn Elementary School District, and as an administrator at Western Placer Unified School District, among other positions. He retired from his career in education in 2009. He was an amazing guy, said John Baggett, who worked with Gamelgard at Twin Rivers Unified School District and who hired him as a fill-in vice principal at Lyman Gilmore School last spring. Every day he would talk about how every day was a gift. He really had that attitude. He really took it to heart. Gamelgard was at Lyman Gilmore for last month and a half of the school year in spring and filled in on occasion this year as well. From the day he started, he was great to have around. He was so positive, Baggett added. He really bonded with the kids, and the staff really appreciated him. He had a real heart for the kids. The staff and students at Lyman Gilmore are putting together a tribute to Gamelgard that will air Friday on the school's news network on its closed-circuit TV. Ellen Gamelgard is the owner of Meadow Farm Yarn Studio in Nevada City. She is also credentialed teacher. Kenneth's influence in his children's lives led each of his sons and daughters-in-laws to pursue public service professions, Alex Gamelgard said. Ken and Alan Ellen have three sons and three daughters-in-law, as well as three grandchildren, all of whom call Nevada County home. The Gamelgard family is thankful for all the prayers and support of the community, Alex Gamelgard said. Due to the significant cost associated with bringing the Gamelgards home, monetary contributions as well as condolences can be sent to the Sierra Presbyterian Church at 175 Ridge Road, Nevada City, 95959. Attention Deacons Fund, Gamelgard slash Wood. Information about memorial service and obituary is pending. And that's it today for our local news. GVTV News would like to thank Associated Press, Reuters, Amy Goodman, the Union, and others for the sourcing of our news, and you for watching. And don't forget, we broadcast three times a day on Public Access, NCTV, Comcast, Cable Channel 11, and Suddenlink Channel 16 in Truckee and Alta Sierra. 8 a.m., 3 p.m., and 7.30 p.m., Monday through Friday, random other times. Just check the website, schedule, and we are streamed daily, nevadacountytv.org, and video on demand there. And also our website, gvtv.org, and rural counties, television network.ning.org.
dot com. We also post to Facebook, YouTube, Blip.tv, free video podcast on iTunes. You can get us on smartphones, PSP, and many handheld devices. And we have RSS feed. And now we would like to thank another underwriter who supports your only visual video news media in Nevada County. That's right, it's us. GV TV News. See you tomorrow. Should be Friday, Thursday night. Christopher's Old World Deli and Catering Company has brought its delicious food and service downtown Grass Valley. Do you like desserts? They got them. You like international style lunches? They got them. Christopher's Deli and Catering for parties, get-togethers, weddings, or whatever. Open seven days a week. Bell Star Shop is a one-of-a-kind place you will find on the ridge. Steaming hot coffee and a cool atmosphere with healthy food, organic desserts, and meals available.